Boys Lines. As Boys Lines. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. You're listening to the As Bold as Lions podcast. Well, hello and welcome. It's so good to have you join me today for another edition, another episode of the As Bold as Lions podcast. My name is Derek, and this is a usually weekly um, offering, weekly editions that come out um, of uh, just content to hopefully encourage you in your walk with Christ, uh, encourage your faith. If that's something that um, you're stumbling upon this and that's um, something you're unfamiliar with and you're maybe just curious or kind of seeking to know more about Jesus, about Christianity, um, hopefully you'll find something that uh, encourages you in that process as well. I I pray that you would. Um, Been doing this podcast for a couple of years now, and it just always amazes me who God brings along uh, the path and in just chance kind of random encounters, but seemingly not random to to the Lord who who kind of sets all these things up. So it's always encouraging for me just to even hear from folks that have tuned in and maybe have uh, taken something from this or a blog that is that has been written, uh, a song, a devotional, whatever, um, different things that are out there. So. Um, just had finished up a series on sharing your faith. And so that may be something encouraging for those who are trying to wrestle through how, how to do that. Maybe just some things that may help you in that process. If you are new to the faith or a seeker type person, uh, there might be some things in there as well for you that, that just get you, um, thinking a little bit more about, about Jesus and, and perhaps what a decision of faith would look like for you. The, uh, the podcast sometimes mirrors what I do on my blog, which used to be a weekly thing, but now is a monthly, once a month blog that goes out. You can join my mailing list for that at, uh, DerekCharlesJohnson.com. Uh, the As Bold as Lions tab I had to think of where that was again. Um, but you can go to my website and, uh, join the mailing list. But a lot of times the podcast that I use, especially the first one of the month is tied into that blog that I've written. So that blog for September, uh, as you see the title of this, it's called the blind spots in our faith. And, uh, just kind of a word that I've just been, uh, I guess focused on maybe has resonated with me in recent uh, days and weeks. And so I wanted to dig into that a little bit more. Um, A blind spot, uh, as you may know, is just any area where a person's view is obstructed, the definition of that. And um, as we jump in, you know, just kind of diving into what what that may look like, look like as we talk about our faith and what blind spots we may have uh, in our walk with the Lord. Um, just been thinking about that, that process of self-examination, not always the, um, maybe the, the thing that we want to go to all the time, not, not always the easiest part maybe of our devotionals and our studies is to kind of hit pause and say, God, you know, examine my heart. Is there anything in me that, that I need to confess or, um, that you would just expose and, and show and reveal to me? Not always the easiest thing to do, but something that I feel like I need to do. Um, I can have this tendency, the older I get, I guess the longer that I've been a Christian to kind of consider myself like I've leveled up. I'm, I'm past where I was before some of these things that, oh, I've, I used to struggle with aren't, aren't so bad anymore. And I've, I've moved on. I'm not just the baby Christian anymore. And, you know, I like, Oh, I've been doing this for so long. I must be doing something right. Kind of in the back of my mind. And 
I, I realize that <laughs> that's completely the wrong way of thinking about things. Um, that as I dig into this topic today, I, I realize I'm 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 still a, a sinner saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. That that is still what marks me. Still what I have to come back to time and time again every day. Um, and as much as I think, well, I'm <clears throat> I'm past this. I'm not struggling with with that as much anymore. Or I'm, you know, not not where maybe the, the things that I used to say or do, but that can quickly lead me into a place of pride as well. It can lead me in a place where I'm just kind of, Oh, I'm above this person, or that person, or I'm just a, I'm just a really good person. And that's some dangerous stuff. And so I need that, that humbling, that, that correction, that willingness just to come under the authority of, of, the Lord and of scripture and to make some choices that, that reflect what, uh, what he's then showing to me and some, maybe make some, uh, course corrections, I guess you could say, or, uh, realize that I'm going down a path that I, I need to switch and, and pivot and go different direction. So I think this process of doing that, getting back to this blind spots, theme or message, um, is kind of about, about looking at that and, and finding those and then applying that to our faith. Um, where, where do we lack maturity as we can, cons- we consider this path that we're on in Christ and we, we want to become more like him. Where do I lack maturity? What, just throwing some things out. What, what are some areas where I lack compassion? Um, what are some habits that I still struggle with? Even even as I've been a Christian this long, maybe don't do some of the things that I, I've done before. What are the things that still are easily um, I'm, I'm drawn to or tempted by? Uh, what are some patterns of selfishness or just self-gain that as I get up in the morning, I'm just consumed with like, what do I what do I need out of this day? What do I what do I have to get out of this day? That's for myself. That's just for me. Um, just those things that I need to, to kind of die to as I, and then pick up my cross and follow Christ. And that's, that's a high calling. That's, that's what, that is what we're called to though. So just a short list of uh, some examples, but as I jot down those things, kind of brainstorm, that gets me thinking about the blind spots that gets me thinking about like, Lord, revealing it and then just bring it to the Lord and saying, God, I need help in this area. Would you help me? Um, and before we kind of jump into main points today and in a little deeper discussion, I want to kind of just put to bed the, this argument that, well, that's, that seems pretty re- legalistic to, to kind of go through this checklist of, of the do's and don'ts of your faith. Like we've got, all this grace that that covers things, and Christ, you know, has, has died, and He's um, He covers all of our sins, past, present, and future. So, so why are you getting so hung up over some of these things that maybe are um, they're just under His 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 power, His authority? And I can be like, well, that that grace is sort of the safety net that allows me to um, to have this freedom in Christ and that then I can just kind of continue to figure it out with, with just that there all the time. And in some ways, yeah, the, the, it is there. He, he gives us grace and, and that's an amazing thing. But in some ways, you know, at the, at the same time, it's like, no, you have to keep contending for and wanting to mature, wanting to keep going into deeper and deeper levels of faith with the outworkings of some of that showing up as, as works that we've we've done because we're we're committed to Christ and we're motivated to to do good things that we're bearing fruit because he's he is um he's just active in our lives i think that that faith without works is dead like it talks about in the bible uh with james and and faith without some recognizable noticeable fruit in a person's life is dead and i think you can apply that to 
the individual person, you can apply that to churches, to ministries. Where's the fruit? Where's the benefit? What is going on that shows that there's a recognizable thing at work here, the Holy Spirit at work here behind all this that's that's happening? And if it's not there, you have to you have to step back and examine why isn't it? If we look at our own lives, why isn't there fruit? Why are people coming to faith because of of my faith? You know, because of of the example that I'm setting. Or, or um, you know, when I'm around people in a conversation, is is the is the type of language being elevated, or is it is it right there with with the rest of you know the words that that get said? Is you know, what's the behavior like if I'm in a situation? And so this, this finger, uh, it, it may look like I'm, I'm just pointing a finger out at, at everybody across the, the airwaves here with this podcast, but really, like they say, you know, one pointed out at you and, and three pointed back at me. Well, there's, there's much finger pointing that I'm doing on myself and just saying, where's, where's the evidence? Where's the, the tangible stuff I can point to that says something is going on in, in that work. And I think we, we just have to keep always in that mode of, of self-examination. Um, so all that to say, it's, I don't believe it's legalistic to, to do this, um, to ask these questions. It's kind of the, just to make sure we're on the same page there. So with, with that kind of our introduction, um, moving forward to identify these areas of shortcoming and just these kind of persistent weeds that we need to pluck out. Um, some of this really may not seem that earth shattering. Some of this may not seem too crazy. And I think that that's good. Like I think we can all kind of nod our heads in agreement and be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I'm, I'm not hearing anything here. That's like, wow, that's just this light bulb thing that that's that Derek, you just reveal, but it's the application. It's the, it's the actual doing of it. It's the actual putting on our shoes and walking it out, so to speak in our faith that, that once we go from hearing it and having the head knowledge and agreeing with it, to actually being motivated to do something with it. That's the difference. And that's where I struggle. It's like, I can talk all day long. I can read about it all day long. I can hear sermons. I can listen to podcasts. I can be surrounded by all the, all the, the right stuff. But if it's not changing me and if it's not having some outworkings, then, then what is it? You know, I'm just that resounding gong clinging symbol that, that Paul's talking about. First Corinthians. And, you know, just to pull an example in here of my, my kids, like, you know, as a parent, you feel like sometimes you're, you're just circling the same issues and the same things again and again and again. And as a parent, you're like, man, is, is this getting into my child? Are, are the, the things I'm trying to teach, the things that I'm hoping that they, they grab onto and then, take hold of and, and, and want that in their own life. Like, is that, is that getting anywhere? And I think that's just the same with, with us. Like it, I think God may, may look at us sometimes, not that he's questioning, like, are they going to get it? Like, I think he knows the, the more that we, we, we long for this, that he'll, he'll uh, continue to increase that desire for more of him. But we have to take that willingness to, to, to walk it out and to step out with it. And so we're going to go through just a few points that, that maybe help in this blind spot discussion and um, hopefully some examples that just kind of give you some, some things to grab hold of as you prayerfully consider this of, of what this means for your life. So how do we identify and move past blind spots and kind of the question setting this up here today. First point I have is ask the Lord to investigate our hearts. Is there any wayward thing within us? Talked about that self-examination, talked about that investigating that we we open ourselves to. Psalm 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Um, whenever I read the Psalms, 
I routinely find this relationship with God, with the Lord, whether it's David, whether it's somebody else, there's just this very open-handed, sort of free flow of thought, but this very much ready to receive correction, instruction, this willingness to be put into that sort of uh, putting oneself in a place of submission of, of just allowing the Lord to, to always have that, that um, permission to just say, I'm, I'm, I'm bearing my soul before you, God, I'm, I'm laying it all out before you. And I can close the Bible. I can look at the world and then see this culture that is sort of resistant to all of that because there's there's this you need to affirm everything I do you need to affirm everything I believe you need to support whatever on the spectrum of identifying with whatever you need to just be okay with it and to not to not do that is is bigoted. It's closed minded. And the culture is feeding this to us all the time. So it goes against this whole, like, I'm an open book. You can examine me. You can cross check me. You can, you can look at me and, 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 you know, quote unquote, fact check me, even though I, I hate that term. That's been just a used and abused term. But when we see things for what they are and realize that, you know, in Christ, we're, we're called to this opposite way of living that we're, we're not saying just, Hey, affirm everything that I do because I get it wrong, you know? And it's only by the grace of God that, that I, I live and I, and you know, I can have any standing. Uh, it's all by him. And so we're, we are to be open to, to teaching. We're to be open to, uh, those moments when the Holy Spirit convicts us and, and impresses upon us some things that that we need to confess and say, "Hey, God, I've I've been messing up here. Would you would you help me move past this?" The culture doesn't doesn't really like that. And you know, the practice of this it, it, it's got to be regular. It's got to be ongoing, a daily sort of a thing that we incorporate. Say, God remove anything from my life that stands in the way between me and you, any barriers, any walls that are, that I put up, you know, there's things like unconfessed sin that I need, I should repent of. Is there some sort of mindset that I just have about the Lord and it's wrong. It's not biblical. It's, it's just, you know, looking at him through the wrong lens. Um, any part of my life that, I've just not fully entrusted to him. Maybe it's a goal. Maybe it's a dream, some sort of desire. And I'm holding on to that or it's just, it's there looming large between uh, my trust of him and, and my walk with him. So these are all these parts of examination, parts of just laying it bare before God. And then they help us to see him more fully. And then lead us into this greater understanding and awareness of his plans. So that first step, asking the Lord to investigate our hearts, anything that, that I need to bring before him. Secondly, and I think this is, this is important as well is to find accountability and community with fellow believers. Hebrews 10, 24, 25. This is a verse that I kind of go to a lot when I'm thinking about this. It says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So we need to we need to meet together. We need to continue in close community with each other. That's a kind of a way to keep checking in on on one each other, one another and, and um, helping uh, helping us to, to stay on this path. Um, an example that just kind of, uh, an illustration of this for me was from the summer and my family and I, we have this, uh, there's seven of us. And when we're taking some trips, long vacation on the road, we're in this uh, suburban Chevy suburban and 
it fits all of us. It's got to be something large enough that we can all kind of um, be able to, to get us in, get our luggage in, all of that. And anyway, we had uh, this thing was just packed to the to the gills for for all of our, our trips this summer. Everywhere we went, it was like stuff at our feet, stuff, you know, between seats. And then the, the main kind of storage area in the furthest back part of the uh, of the vehicle where you've got this hatch door that swings up and then you've got a few feet of, of just um, your largest area for suitcases and, and bags and what have you. Anyway, that thing was full all the way up so that when I'm driving, my wife's driving, there's no way to see out the, the window, the, the rear view mirror, because all of it's, it's all blocked with stuff. And so I had to routinely ask for help and to say, Hey, there's, I want to switch lanes or I want to go here, turn or whatever. Is it clear? Because I, I can't see, I can, I can turn my head and kind of look back and see, but I can't see as, as much as I'd like to. And, uh, and it was just really this, this literal way to check the blind spot and make sure that there wasn't something there that could uh, cause a problem. And uh, it just kept us going down the highway, able to, to keep navigating our way. And I just think of that, like knowing how helpful that was to have somebody like checking, looking another set of eyes was, was helpful for the blind spots. Um, and just how, as we navigate our lives spiritually and in the Lord, we need one another in order to check for those blind spots as well. We have to be open to accountability. That's not always a fun word to, to, to mean I'm accountable to somebody. I'm, I'm putting myself kind of in a vulnerable state with this person because again, they're, I'm going to. I'm going to bear some parts of my soul and it may not all look pretty. You know, chances are there's going to be some ugliness that that the person's going to see. And hopefully if we're accountable with one another, they're sharing some of that as well. Or, or maybe it's just a mentor type mentee relationship where that person has a little bit more maturity and uh, is able to help somebody along things that we, uh, we just seek out those voices of, of truth to help us. Doesn't mean we, we do this with everybody. Doesn't mean everybody you walk in the, the doors of the church and they know everything about you. You know, that, that wouldn't necessarily be healthy or good either. Um, but a handful of close, trusted Christians that you walk this path with. And then people who, they can call you on stuff. Like, man, that behavior, what you said there, that... I really got to tell you, man, that that wasn't Christ-like. That wasn't God-honoring. And to be able to do that with each other, um, say, hey, I'm struggling with this sin. I'm struggling with this temptation right now. Would you pray for me? Would you text me? You know, guys, um, especially the the issues of, of lust and temptation, sexual sin, for guys and, and gals too, like we, we need people to be able to pull us aside and say, how are you, how are you doing in that? What have you looked at this week? You know, what's been on your phone? What's, um, how, how's your Bible reading been, been going? What's God been telling you through his word and in your study? Stuff like that. Stuff to keep us, keep, keep spurring us, uh, on and, and as Hebrew says, not, not to, uh, kind of discard this this habit of meeting together but to keep meeting together to keep doing that and then to glorify God through that I think life can often be unnecessarily difficult simply because we do not reach out and do not desire real Christian community so first couple points here we're um, asking the Lord to investigate our lives we're finding accountability the third and final thing that I have today in this finding your blind spots, identifying your blind spots, is to then allow the identification of these blind spots to bring you into new places of freedom. Mark nine twenty two through 24, 
Um, this is a this is a conversation between a man who has a child who's um, possessed, demonically possessed, and he's coming to Jesus looking for help. Um, and it, we pick it up in verse twenty two. It's talking about the demon. It says it has often cast him into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. I love this interaction between Jesus and this father, the boy, he's got an unclean spirit, um, demonic uh, possession. And I think I love it because it reflects my own heart, my own mindset when I consider some of these blind spots. The father is is coming to Jesus. He knows there's something about him. He knows there's something that he can do in order to help him. He's, he's probably at the end of his rope, though, just looking for an answer. And he, he comes before him and says, if you can do anything, if you can. And, and Jesus picks up on that word, if. Like, hey, you know, there's, there's, there's still a hint of doubt there. Like, you're, you're thinking, I can do something, hopefully, you know, but you're still kind of leaving that. that I, I suppose he's been burned a number of times, and he's just like, man, I, I, I hope this is, the, this is the answer. I'm bringing my son to him of desperation. But Jesus picks up a, a little bit of that, that doubt. And when Jesus presses the man on this, he says this this statement, which just is the statement for me of of what I think is the most honest, real statement in the whole Bible. He says, "I believe, help my unbelief." We all come to Christ at a point where our belief in him has to uh, overcome our unbelief. So when we take that first step of saying, Jesus, come into my life, I'm a sinner. I believe that you died. Um, I believe that you rose again. When we, we kind of take that basic salvation uh, sinner's prayer and, and pray that, however, we, we, we kind of acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior. At that moment, our belief in him is overcoming any level of unbelief. We're, we're stepping forward and that those, those scales have been tipped. And it's like, I believe in you, Jesus, I'm going to, I'm going to take this step. And at that point, this, this big word called justification, which is kind of our right standing with God, that, that becomes that, that is put upon us. Like that's how God sees us. He sees the shed blood of Jesus covering our sin. We are justified before the Lord. And that happens right away. Instantaneous. But this, this other big word called sanctification, which means being made holy, a process of being made like, to become like Jesus, that's an ongoing thing. There's the instantaneous, and then there's the ongoing. And those are aspects of our faith that we continually wrestle with. What this father expressed uh, to Jesus is the point at which a breakthrough has to occur that there has to be another level where he's, he steps into faith that is beyond what he's, he's had at the, up to this point. And with each successive blind spot that we identify and then remove, or we allow the Holy spirit to work upon and remove, we're walking into deeper and deeper levels of freedom. We're walking into deeper levels of, of holiness, of closeness, of proximity, I believe, with the Lord. And really, we're then, we're going into some uncharted waters. We're following after the Lord in places that we've never been before, with a faith that we've never, we've never exhibited before. And that's an amazing thing. And the longer I'm I'm living this life for the Lord. Talk about this way back at the beginning, you know, the, the, the longevity that we have in Christ, sometimes thinking, man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. Cast all that aside and say, God, I just want to, I want to trust you more. I want to, I want to follow you more. And, and I want to, I want to be, I don't want to be about yesterday's faith. I don't want to be about where I'm at right now, even, and, and thinking like, I'm, man, I'm, I'm glad I'm not there. I'm not at that old place. Yeah, I, that's great. But I, I want to think about what's, 
what is next? What am I believing upon uh, and trusting you in to say, uh, I will move past that. I will, I will say, I believe and help my unbelief, help anything that's still a blind spot to, to, to be removed so that I can see around it and keep pressing in towards you. So those are our main uh, things that I, I, I kind of bring into this discussion. And I think it's a combination of all those things. Certainly just always going before the Lord every day, just saying, God, examine my heart, examine where I'm at. Are we good? Is there anything in me that, that holds me back from a closer walk with you? And then being willing to, to take that into our relationships with trusted close friends and community and, and just saying, are, am I good? Am I, am I, are there things that I need to keep, um, just seeking help on and, and having others come around me and pray for me and support me. And then just allowing the, the deepening of our faith, the removal of these things that are barriers in our lives to just bring us into, like I said, these uncharted waters where we're, we're seeing and we're believing the Lord for even greater things to, to press into that. To, to say, I'm not, I, I know what God has done in the past. I can look back at his faithfulness, but I don't want to just, you know, look upon the good old days and just say, just kind of stay in the past. I want to believe for those things again, just looking at the Bible and opening and saying, God, what you've done in scripture, the, the healings, the miracles, the, the, um, deliverances, the, the restoration, do it again, do it in our day. So as we conclude, um, that's, that's, that's where I want to just leave you with this, this idea of the uncharted waters to, to ponder and consider what God might have in store for you as you trust him more. And one of the saddest things that I've witnessed are Christians who just play it safe and then never experience this full potential that God has for them. Yet every day I see blind spots that either go unidentified or they're just ignored in the hopes that man, just a little Jesus will be enough to save me. A little fire insurance, that'll be okay. And I think we have to pray for these these folks, certainly. That's, that's something we're called to do. But we're not to allow our own faith to be held back or, or um, put into question by the inaction of, of others that you see around you. That that you need to, to not let yourself get mired down in... in in the lack of faith that you may see in others or the disappointment you may have at times over where other Christians are at when, um, when that's just what they're comfortable with, that we pray against that. We pray against the comfortable, I guess, Americanized Christianity that we've, we've become okay with because it's, it's not biblical and it's not really changing any lives. So for those that are, are called to go deeper, those that are wanting to find those uncharted waters, this message is for you. This discovery of your blind spots and, and moving past them, this message is for you. And I hope you will respond to, to Jesus' offer to, to even believe for greater things. I hope you'll pray over these areas and then ask the Lord to, to just examine your heart reveal anything you need to confess and anything that you need to lay be- bare before him. And, and then to find community with like-minded folks that, that are on the same page with that. Cause there are other people out there and there's a hunger among the church, among the bride, I believe for, for more, for deeper, for greater things to not rest on the laurels of, of what yesterday has brought us, what, wherever we've gotten, because we can't stay in those places. We have to be, continually contending and wanting to go deeper in the faith. As you, as you run this race, I I spur you on to run fully abandoned to Jesus. And I'm praying that you find freedom and joy and purpose in, in, in the race and in what you're doing. May these blind spots just become smaller and smaller and may the fullness of Jesus fullness of his glory. May it increase over your life. Guys, as always, it's a pleasure to to bring a word before you. And in this first uh, 
episode of September. Going to be moving forward into, I think, some kind of series for the rest of this month. Um, then taking October as a as just hitting the pause button over um, the podcast and resuming. My plan is to resume in November and December. And then while we're already thinking about 2024 and, and what's what's on the uh, uh, docket for that, um, prayerfully considering everything with with as bold as lines, the podcast, the devotional, the blog, laying all that before the Lord as well. And I, I would ask for you, if you um, would think of it, to pray over that as well. To say, God, give give Derek wisdom in in what what you want to say and and where you want to take all of this. Love the time we have together. Love that um, we get to walk this journey together in faith in Christ, leaving you with our theme verse from Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will. Until next time, take care. Hey guys, this is Derek Charles Johnson. You have been listening to the As Bold as Lions podcast. I am a blogger, a songwriter, an artist. And if you've been encouraged by this podcast, please go ahead and subscribe and share and head over to DerekCharlesJohnson.com for more encouraging content. God bless.